We are back on the record at 1.17 p.m. Ms. Holmes, did you have any substantive conversations <coughs> with the SEC staff during the break? No, I not. Thank you. Rupert Murdoch invested in the CT round of Theranos, correct? Yes. And he made his investment around January 2015? I had February in my mind, um, but yes, around then. You were in discussions with him about investing in Theranos around November, December, and January of that time frame? Yes. <clears throat> Did you review the binder of documents that Theranos sent to um, Mr. Murdoch ahead of his, his investment? I don't know that I reviewed it before he invested. I know I've seen it since then. Do you know who put the binder together? I don't. Do you know what Theranos, uh, who at Theranos would have had the responsibility to do something like that at the time? Uh, again, similar to some of the other projects, we had different project managers who would <coughs> compile materials before meetings or to follow up with people. Who would have instructed the project managers as to what to put into these binders for investors? I don't know that we gave binders to all investors. My memory is that after Rupert had said he wanted to invest, which was earlier, um, we then said we would send him a, a set of background materials on what we were trying to do. Um, okay, so you, you might not have <clears throat> compiled and sent out binders to all investors or potential investors, but when you did, who would have been deciding what to include in these binders? Um, again, I, d I don't think there was one person who was making decisions about this. I'm sure I had um, discussions with the team about it. Sonny may have as well, and um, people who were focusing on particular areas of the business that we want to share material on would have also. Besides you and Mr. Balwani, would there have been anyone else at Theranos who would have made decision a decision as to what to include <coughs> or not to include in binders? Again, I, I don't have memory of one of these specific interactions. Um, my general memory is that whoever the sort of subject matter um, point person was for a given area would aggregate materials for that area, and that would be included. And who would have the final say as to what went into the binders or didn't go into the binders to investors? Uh, again, I, I don't know. I think it deferred on a case-by-case -case basis. This was not a consistent practice across um, all the investors that we engaged with. Do you recall re uh, reviewing Mr. Murdoch's binder before you sent it to him? I do not. What, do you recall sending binders to any other prospective investors other than Mr. Murdoch? No. Uh, well, what about sort of the similar binders, the similar documents as what would be in a binder, uh, just electronically? Do you remember sending electronic documents to any potential investors? I, I don't have memory of it, no. Okay, if you would pick up Exhibit 221 again, which is this large document over here. <coughs> you can turn to uh, the page with base number ending 6306, which is page 58 of the document. 358? 58. Yep. Do you see there are some text messages here um, dated December 16th, 2014 to December 17th, 2014? Are you on that page? I'm sorry, this is December 13th of 2015. Are you on page 58? Oh, I'm sorry, I was on 358. Oh, okay. Page 58. Yep. <clears throat> doesn't look the same as mine. Are you sure you're on page 58? 58 of right. Is this, the date should be December 16th to 17th, 2014. December 16th. What page number did you say it was? 6306. 6306, that's the difference. Yeah. This is 68? Is it 68? 
My, my copy looks like 58, but okay. it's probably right. Do you see December 16th to 17th, 2014? Yep. Text yes. messages? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> so if you look halfway down the page, there's a text message from you to Mr. Balwani on December 16th, 2014 at 11.34 p.m. Do you see that? It says, are there any materials in the binders you think should be removed for Murdoch slash News Corp? Do you see that text message? I do. Are you asking Mr. Balwani for input as to what to include in the binder that you were going to provide to Mr. Murdoch? Again, I, I don't remember the specific text, but reading it now, I, I read it as asking for his advice on whether the right materials were in the Murdoch binder. So with, does this refresh your recollection that you would have reviewed Mr. Murdoch's binder before you sent it out? No, I don't have memory of doing that. You can put that one aside. Partner fund management, um, did you understand that PFM was another way to, um, that partner fund management was called? But the PFM and yes. partner fund management are the same entity? I do. Okay. Uh, PFM invested in the C2 round for Theranex, correct? <coughs> yes. How much did they invest? Uh, I think it was $96 million. You were in discussions with PFM in late 2014 and January 2000, I'm sorry, late, let me start over again. You were in discussions with PFM in late 2013 and January 2014 regarding their potential investment? Uh, as I understand, I <coughs> met them in December of 14, and we had a meeting to discuss their potential investment in January of, I'm sorry, December of 13, and met them for the first time. And then in January of 14, we had a meeting to discuss their potential investment. Do you remember having a series of meetings with them in January 2014 before their investment? Um, as far as I know, there's only one that, that I was in. Um, I, I understand there were other interactions also. Which meeting was that? Um, meeting in which they came to discuss Theranos and our vision and whether get an understanding of whether uh, it would be the right investment opportunity. Did you present any materials to PFM at that meeting? I don't know. What do you recall telling them about Theranos? <coughs> I, I don't recall the discussion very well. I've seen notes uh, of those meetings since then. What, whose notes have you seen? Um, notes uh, that were um, taken, I think, by members of PFM's team. Which members of PFM's team? I, I don't know. How did you review those notes? Um, with counsel in preparing for potential litigation with PFM. Did you review the notes any time prior to reviewing them with counsel? No. <clears throat> do, do you remember who from PFM you met with in that? Uh, sort of substantive meeting of Theranos that you attended? Um, I, I believe it was there, <coughs> as well as members of his team um, that were doing due diligence. I, I don't know um, what their names were by memory sitting here now. Before that meeting with, uh, with him, do you remember being introduced to him in the December time frame? I do. Uh, were you introduced to anyone else from PFM? <coughs> I think it was in the first meeting. Do you, do, you, do you recall whether he was at that second meeting? I don't. Uh, who was at that meeting from Theranos? Uh, which meeting? The meeting that you were talking about where you met with PFM and talked about the vision for the company? In, in January? In January. Um, at least myself and Sunny. I don't know if anyone else was in the meeting. I'm going to hand to you what's been previously marked Theranos Visit 255. Exhibit 255 purports to be, um, and actually I also handed you Exhibit 256. I think uh, both the email and the attachment were marked separately as exhibits. Um, exhibit 255 purports to be a January 17, 2014 email from Sunny Balwani to subject re with base number THPFM 00038705 and Exhibit 256 uh, purports to be a uh, PowerPoint presentation with title Theranos with starting base number TS-0315637. 
Have you seen Exhibit 255 uh, before? I don't think so. Have you seen Exhibit 256 before? Um, I don't know. It looks like an internal Theranos deck. Um, so if you turn back to Exhibit 255, <coughs> Is it all part of one dot, or maybe it's just two different types of paper? I think it might have been printed on two different okay. types of paper because we ran out of paper. <laughs> okay. But it is one one document. I understand that. Okay. Um, if you turn back to Exhibit 255, mm -hmm. um, you'll see there's an email on 573, which is the second page of Exhibit 255 from to Sonny Balwani. And he says, Sonny, thanks again for the time you spent with our team walking us through the Theranos story. It's amazing to see what you and Elizabeth and the rest of the Theranos team have accomplished over the last 10 years. <coughs> Was the initial meeting uh, between you, Mr. Balwani, and the PFM team around January 10th, 2014? I think so. Would he have been referring to that meeting with you and Mr. Balwani? I don't know. I mean, I could infer that from looking at this email right now, but I don't know. Okay, and if you turn um, to Exhibit 256, then you'll see that, and actually, if looking back at Exhibit 255, we'll see that Mr. Balwani is sending a uh, presentation to. Um, he says, Attached, please find a PDF, which is a very confidential slide deck of the discussions we had see that mm -hmm. and then he's attaching a very long presentation which is at exhibit 256. Do you remember presenting this presentation to and the rest of the PFM <coughs> team at that January 2014 meeting? I don't think we presented it. Okay, what do you what do you recall presenting? Uh, my memory is that we did not present slides we had a discussion. So your testimony is that you remember not presenting slides but having a discussion? Yes, and I think there may have been one slide that was pulled up which resulted in a request for the deck, but I don't think we did a presentation to a slide deck. I think we, we may have used a slide in support of a discussion point. Which slide uh, do you recall using during that meeting? I, I don't know. I don't remember it. So you recall a slide uh, being the impetus for PFM requesting the slide deck, but you don't remember what that slide was? Yes. So looking through the presentation, <coughs> you said that this looks like some kind of internal uh, Theranos presentation. Do you recall that? Yes, testimony. Uh, who would have prepared this slide deck? I, I don't think it was one person. I think it was an aggregation of content from different areas of the company that we just kept on adding to over time. Were you involved in preparing any part of this presentation? I, I don't know. I, I haven't gone through the whole thing. I'm just flipping through it. It looks like it's, it's a lot of content about different parts of our company. Was Mr. Balwani involved in preparing parts of this presentation? I don't know. Uh, generally during that January 2014 meeting with PFM, <coughs> were there parts that you discussed with PFM versus parts that uh, Mr. Balwani discussed with them? And what are what are some of those topics uh, you recall discussing with PFM versus what Mr. Balwani discussed? So I, I don't have recollection of specific conversations in the meeting. I know in general in these initial meetings with investors I would talk about our vision and what we were trying to do as a company. <coughs> what did you recall Mr. Balwani talking about? Uh, again, I, I don't have a specific recollection of, of what was said in the meeting. As a, as a general matter, would he have a role in, in certain topics more prominently? Yes, um, on the operations of the business and on the models or projections that we were putting together. Okay, so I just want to draw your attention to a couple of the slides in this presentation. So if you turn to 644, Yes. 
this slide is titled media. Do you see that? And the third bullet point was, was that a yes? Yes. Okay. And the third bullet point down, it says not disclosing device work with hospitals and or the DOD or future innovations or expansion plans. Do you recall ever um, putting together slides or documents with that statement? No. Do you know, do you have any understanding as to what this is talking about? Sitting here now, I read it to mean that we were not <coughs> disclosing to the media uh, essentially the, the plan for the mini lab uh, work with hospitals or other future innovations or expansion plans. Did you have that same understanding in January 2014? Why don't you turn to page 651. So here there's a slide <clears throat> titled, Same Test, A Whole New Approach. And the first line says, Theranos runs any test available in central laboratories and processes all sample types. Was this statement true in January 2014? I, I believe so. I don't know how much of our infrastructure had been operationalized in January, but essentially the concept that you could collect any type of sample and through Theranos have it processed um, was certainly the business model. Uh, was it true that Theranos was, could run any, uh, or was running any test available in central laboratories? Theranos as a lab service offering, I, I believe so, because we had, I think at that point, reference labs set up to process some of the samples. So you see there's some pictures above that statement with um, what looks like a collection device. Is that part of the nanotainer or the capillary tube? Yes. That leads to the nanotainer. Uh, were you worried at all that this might create an impression that Theranos was using it's um, only its uh, manufacturer devices to run tests? Uh, my general recollection is the point we were trying to make here is that you could do collection through Fingerstick and have an end-to-end -end lab service offering, and that was the discussion that would accompany this type of slide. Okay, but when, when, you, when you say that was the discussion that would accompany it, do you recall accompanying the slide with that discussion you just described? I, I don't I don't have specific recollection of discussing this slide, um, but just sitting here now reading it um, and knowing how we would generally describe what we were trying to do, uh, that's my read on it. Okay, but you don't recall providing that sort of commentary in connection with the slide to anyone? I, I don't think that these slides were discussed with PFM. What, what about any other investor? I don't think so. So, so you, I guess just to answer my question, you didn't, you don't recall providing that sort of commentary that you just described um, in connection with this slide with any potential investor in Theranos? I, I do not. I, I actually think this may have been on our website in the context of making that point, but I'm, I'm not sure. Was the statement true in January 2014 that Theranos was running any test available in central laboratories using one of your finger stick methods? I don't think that's what this says. I, I think the point that we were trying to make here is that you could collect finger stick for some tests and then also through Theranos as a lab service provider, we could accommodate any sample and do any tests so people wouldn't have to go to two different locations. So you're saying that the pictures at the top and the statement below it are actually two separate statements? I believe so. What about the statement at the very top? The same test, a whole new approach. Uh, was Theranos providing a whole new approach with respect to um, running any test available in the central laboratory? Uh, again, my, my read on this sitting here now is that the point we were trying to make was that we were introducing this finger stick methodology for blood testing more broadly and you could run any test available in, in a central or through Theranos as a lab provider uh, in a central lab. So so with the, I guess my question is just with Theranos as a central lab provider was it was as a central lab provider was it offering a whole new approach? 
we believed so because we were the first to introduce finger stick, the first to do upfront eligibility, telling people how much they were going to owe, the first to create this consumer experience, and we were trying to offer the ability to run any test through our laboratory when patients came at retail. <coughs> you turned to 667. Uh, 6.67. 6.67. <coughs> You'll see there's a slide here with the title commercial. And the first line under that says key <coughs> deployments. And then there are a number of bullet points, two of which are emergency rooms, hospitals, and provider offices. And the second bullet point underneath is DOD. Do you see that? Yes. Was Theranos's technology deployed? in emergency rooms, hospitals, and provider offices? No. Was Theranos's technology deployed at the DOD? I believe the burn study was underway at multiple hospitals at this time, but not otherwise. Is that what you would have been talking about on the slide? Uh, no, sitting here now, my read on this is that this is our aspiration for what we thought all the key deployments would be in building out a commercial infrastructure. Was that your understanding at the time, too, that these were aspirational? Uh, again, targets? I don't remember this specific slide, but yes, there's a lot of aspirational content in this deck of what we were trying to do with the company. And, and I guess how, how, how can you distinguish between what was aspirational at the time and what Theranos was actually doing at the time when we're, when we're viewing this slide deck? I, I don't think these slides were intended to be standalone. They were a whole set of content that we would share as background material that were intended to be supplement with discussion and interaction. <clears throat> okay, so do you, do you, but do you recall ever providing that supplemental discussion and interaction with any potential investors? Um, I, I know that we had multiple follow-on meetings in which investors would <clears throat> ask questions about um, areas of the business that they were interested in. I don't know that investors actually ever read this deck uh, end to end. Uh, I, I guess, to, just back, my, back to my question, do you recall ever having that sort of discussion about this deck with any investors? Like whether, whether this I, whole thing or, or, or a subset of it? I don't believe an investor ever asked a question about the deck that I know of. Did you ever provide a subset of this presentation to any potential investors? I don't know. Would it surprise you if you did? Not necessarily. I, I don't have the memory of doing that. Um, if you were providing, um, to the extent that you did provide uh, a subset of this presentation to any potential investors, how would that potential investor know what was aspirational versus what was actually the truth at the time that they were re reviewing the presentation? In general, my understanding is that these materials were sent after we had meetings with uh, investors or potential investors or partners, and they followed discussions about what we were trying to do, who we were as a company, um, and were intended as background material on exactly what we were trying to do. We turn to 682 and 683. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Sure. So, Ms. Holmes, in, your, in these meetings that you had with investors and potential investors, did you talk about what was aspirational, what you wanted to achieve? Yes. And did you talk about specifically the technology and blood draw and what was in place at that time versus what was aspirational? Was there a clear delineation between those two? We tried to do that. Um, looking back on it now, and especially in the case of PFM, I wish we had done that even more explicitly, including in writing. We didn't have the same type of systems in place we have now on things like sending out materials, but we thought we had at the time. And what specifically do you wish you would have communicated to PFM at the time? What I, I, I think we did communicate, which is phase one, phase two, um, what we were doing in phase one, what the business model was, what technology we were using, and what we were doing in phase two, and what technology we were intending to use in phase two. I, I know that we also really thought we were closer to phase two than we were. 
just, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. So you, is it your testimony that you did communicate phase one and phase two to PFM, or you wish you would have conveyed phase one and phase two to PFM? It's my testimony that I think I did. We, we did, Theranos did. I, I don't know if it was me specifically. And it's also my testimony that you know I, I understand if you take this document in isolation uh, that we could have done a much better job in creating documents that we were sending to people. We, we didn't intend these documents to be standalone. And, and you know, sitting here now, I know we could have been much better at the way we prepared materials and shared them. Um, than we were at the time. So is it your testimony that in the discussions, the meetings that you had with PFM, that you did describe phase one and phase two, but that that's not was what was that was not necessarily reflected here in the document that we're looking at? Yes, it's my testimony that I believe in the meetings that we had with PFM, we did describe phase one and phase two. And additionally, in looking at this slide deck, I don't think this slide deck does a good job of describing that on a standalone basis. Okay, thank you. Who, who bears responsibility for the failures of this slide deck? It's my understanding that PFM understood, based on what we at least tried to communicate, um, or, or I guess I, I had thought that we had communicated um, that this was an internal deck that we were sharing with them for background purposes, not that it was intended to operate as a standalone document, and um, I, I wish we had done a much better job of you know, documenting that in terms of the communication with them, but we had at least intended to be clear when we sent it that this was supposed to be an internal sort of compilation of materials that we were sharing for background purposes. Sure, I understand that, but I guess, uh, you know, I think what you described is you, you, um, you know, you sort of wish it, it, it had been communicated in a different way. Yep. Um, whose responsibility would it have been to communicate in a different way to PFM at that time? Um, well, I, I mean, in retrospect, I, I think we should have, in writing, documented what I think we had said to them, which was that this was a compilation of internal materials that we would share, and exactly what, what the deck was. I I think we, we at least attempted to communicate that verbally, uh, but we don't have good record of that. Well, who's the we in that sentence, I guess? Is it, is it you and Sonny? Is it, is it Theranos the company? Who? Theranos the company. I, I can't remember the specifics of the conversations with PFM and um, you know, the moment when they, they asked for the deck. I, I just know my general understanding of what happened in the context of sending this material. OK, so can you point to anyone who would be, who, who you think bears responsibility for uh, for the way in which this deck was sent and communicated to, P to PFM? Um, well, I, I mean, Theranos, myself, Sunny, in the context of the engagement with PFM, we were the principals interacting with them. Okay, so, um, uh, uh, I mean, understanding that Theranos is an entity and you and Sunny are individuals, uh, other than you and Sunny, are there any other individuals you feel bear responsibility for that? For what? For, 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 um, you know, as you said, sort of the the, the way in which the, the slide deck was communicated to PFM. Um, I don't I don't know if anybody else had had interaction with them around it. I mean, this was the way the company was operating at at this time generally, and we believed at that time that the people who we were interacting with understood what the content we were sharing was. If you turn to um, 682 and 683, and I think you're on 682 right now, uh, we're also looking at, oh, 683, we're also looking at 682 as well. Yep. What were you trying to convey in these two pages? Have you, have you seen these slides before, <coughs> whether it's outside of this presentation or not? Um, I have. I, I remember them as being from the slide deck we were using with our retail partners to talk about what the process would be at retail for doing a finger stick. So here are you trying to convey that, where it says lab today on 682, uh, are you trying to convey that you know today blood testing is being done by a venipuncture using a syringe? Is that what you're trying to convey by the first picture? I, I don't know. I, I think in general these were 
slides describing finger sticker retail. Okay. Um, so what what is the message that you're portraying by six um, through six eighty two? Do you mind if I take a minute to look at the slides before it and after? Sure. Sitting here now, my read is that it's a description of what finger stick testing would be like uh, at Walgreens. Is that, is that meaning aspirationally? I mean, my memory is that most of this deck is aspirational. Um, but yes, it's, I mean, it starts with the sort of Walgreens store and then the process of doing the collection and what that process would be like. And I, again, think these slides were from actually a retail deck on what the service offering would be. So turning to 685, there's a slide titled New Possibilities in Lab, and it says uh, under routine specialty and esoteric testing, all 1,000 plus currently run tests, CPT codes are available through Theranos. And again, Theranos runs any test available in central laboratories. Was that a true statement in January 2014 that all 1,000 plus currently run tests or CPT codes are available through Theranos? Again, I think it's the same comment that the whole range of tests could be run through Theranos' lab, and I, I think that was true in January 14, but I'm not sure how much of that had been operationalized in January 14, because we'd only been open for a couple months at that point. And so this would have been including tests being run on the modified commercially available machines, tests being run on the unmodified commercially available machines, and also tests being sent out to reference labs? That's right. Was that conveyed to potential investors when you were talking about how a thousand plus currently run tests were being offered through Theranos Labs? I don't know that we were ever talking specifically about this. Um, I, I thought that we had uh, and talked about what we were running and that we were including reference lab capabilities in our service offering in phase one. When you say you thought you had conveyed that, do you know that you conveyed it to any potential investors? Again, I don't remember specific conversations on, on these points. Okay, going to 698 then. There's a slide here titled Validation of Theranos. And at the bottom of the slide, it says excerpts from Johns Hopkins due diligence and technology validation. Do you see that? Yes. Did Johns Hopkins conduct a validation of Theranos' technology? Um, but as I understand it, they did for Walgreens. What do you mean, as you understand it, they did for Walgreens? Um, Walgreens team would talk about the Johns Hopkins validation, meaning that Johns Hopkins had signed off on um, sort of the architecture of the technology as a platform that could do all these things. Earlier in your testimony, you testified that no devices were ever given to Johns Hopkins. Do you remember that? We brought one to the meeting, I believe, um, but yes, I don't think Theranos independently shipped devices to Hopkins. Okay, so how did Johns Hopkins conduct a validation of your technology if it didn't have access to your, your device? Uh, again, my understanding is that this was really looking at the design and architecture of the technology. Would it be capable of doing something that no other point of care technology had ever been able to do? You also testified earlier that your understanding of validation included such factors as linearity and precision and test specificity. Do you remember that? It's assay or chemistry validation, yes. Okay. Do you remember Johns Hopkins doing any of that no. uh, study on your on uh, of your either your tests or your devices? No. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, you, any of the assays you mean, as opposed to the device? So I'm asking her. Do you under Do you remember Johns Hopkins doing any um, 
work on either validating the tests or the devices under that framework, what we just talked about. We're looking at linearity, precision, test specificity. They reviewed some of that data. Uh, they did not perform validations themselves. They just reviewed data. We turn to 700. Can I ask another question on uh, 698? Do you see the line above that? It says Theranos' lab infrastructure is validated under FDA, ICH, and World Health Organization guidelines. Mm -hmm. Do, uh, was that a true statement as of January 2014? I don't know. Um, I, I know that our understanding of the standards that we were using to validate our LDTs, our lab developed tests, changed over time. And I think this is what that is referring to, but um, we later learned that we should be using different standards. I guess, what, what, what do you take lab infrastructure to mean? I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I, I could guess. It's in here now. Uh, I mean, is, it, is, 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 the rep, is the sentence here, Theranos' lab infrastructure, Validated under FDA, ICH, and World Health, Orga World, World Health Organization guidelines, um, a statement that Theranos' TSPU has been validated under these guidelines? No. I've been sitting here now, my read is that it's talking about the standards that we were using for validation of the lab developed tests. I get, uh, were lab developed tests often called infrastructure? I don't know. Did you ever use that word to call in, in referring to lab developed tests? I, I don't know. Can you recall an instance where it was? I can't. Who drafted that slide? I don't know. <coughs> I think, again, like many of these slides, it's, it's an old slide that was carried through in a lot of decks or, and or updated over time. If you turn to 700, there's a slide titled Products. And here under device, it, there's a bullet point that says mini lab and 4S for automated processing. Do you see that? Yes. These weren't the only devices that were used by Theranos for patient testing, were they? I, I don't think either of them were used for patient testing. Okay, why, why didn't you include, for instance, the 3.5 that was being used for patient testing here? I, I believe that this is a specific slide talking about what products the company wanted to develop on a go-forward basis. How, how, what's your basis for that belief? I, I generally recognize it, and I generally have memory that we were trying to distinguish sort of products from the clinical lab, that Theranos was developing products and it also was operating a lab, and that this part of the discussion was on the, the technology or the products that we were trying to build. Do you, did you ever talk to investors and show them this particular slide? Again, I, I don't remember ever having conversations with investors about the slide deck. Did you, but did you uh, ever have any conversations with investors about this particular slide? I don't think so. What about 701, which is the next page? There are pictures of a no number of things under the title Overview Theranos Systems. Under Theranos analyzers, there's, there's a picture of two analyzers there. What are these pictures of? Um, one is of the the three series device. I don't know if it's a 3.0 or a 3.5, and the other one is one of the four series devices in Mini Labs. Okay, so here under you know you're give, you're actually showing pictures of Theranos analyzers. Why didn't you include other machines that you were using, including the commercially available machines here? Again, I don't think this part of the presentation, these slides were used to support anything about the clinical lab. I think this was talking about the proprietary technologies that we were working to develop for distributed testing. Did you think that this might give the wrong impression that the only Theranos analyzers Theranos was using were its own proprietary devices and that Theranos wasn't using commercially available machines to conduct testing? Not at the time, because we weren't using these decks. Um, for the purpose of trying to provide a comprehensive overview of the company. Um, but again, we're right, preparing this content now. We're, we're being very careful to prepare this content very differently now. 
So do you think it could have been made clearer that we were not providing an overall uh, picture of what the company was doing or using and that um, it, you could have been more specific as to the analyzers <coughs> Theranos was using at the time? At the time, we did not think that these slides were ever going to be looked at as standalone descriptions of what we were doing. We thought they were um, tools to facilitate different parts of the discussion. Now, again, we are taking a very different approach to how we're preparing any content. Why don't you turn to 733? Sorry, before we leave the slide again, just the, the slide is titled Overview of Theranos Systems. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, is that a yes? Yes. Uh, it, 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 I mean, is it your basic testimony that this isn't an overview of Theranos systems, it's an overview of Theranos' plan systems? Um, Theranos systems was the word that we generally use to describe the proprietary family of technologies that we were developing with Minilab. And yes, it's my general memory that this, this deck was about was aspirational. So these were the technologies we wanted to take into the FDA and distribute on the market, but obviously had not done that yet. Just one other follow-up, Ms. Holmes. Um, you just said prior to Mr. Uh, Kolhikar's question that the deck was a tool to facilitate discussion. Yeah. Um, so I know you said that you didn't go over the deck or other than that one slide. Did you have the deck there in the meeting and you were going through it? with PFM, or how did that work? Um, I, I don't know that we had the deck with us. Um, it's <coughs> my general understanding that we did not go through a deck with PFM at all. I think that on a computer, I don't know if it was mine or, in fact, I'm, it probably was not mine because I generally didn't bring computers to meetings, but a slide was put up to support a conversation, and I generally understand that after that, PFM asked, could you send the deck <coughs> that slide is from? and we sent this big deck. So when you were having the discussion with PFM uh, employees, did did you have the deck in front of you, even though you weren't projecting it or any of the slides from it, did you have it as kind of a tool that you would use, either you or Mr. Balwani would use, to facilitate the discussion that you previously testified to? I, I don't think it was up on the screen. Um, I think it was literally brought up with a slide to facilitate discussion. I. I can infer from that that it was on a computer that was in the room uh, at the time of the meeting. Okay. I guess, uh, did, you, did you have a copy for your, uh, of the slide deck for yourself to use as sort of a no. set of talking points? No. Did you generally have a prepared set of talking points when meeting with investors? No. What did you use to sort of guide the discussion? Um, I, I would generally speak um, in, in free form because the part of the conversation that I had was was our vision so it was about talking about who we were what we were trying to do and then I would talk about the inventions and then from there um, there was generally follow-on discussions where people would do diligence and I for the most part was not involved in those uh, next set of conversations because they were with mr. Balwani or someone else from Theranos yes just real if, if you didn't use the deck during the meeting and you didn't use it yourself as a tool to facilitate the discussion, then my question would be, what then is the point of the deck? The, the deck was a um, amalgamation of slides <coughs> that Theranos had. It was used by different teams, different people for different purposes. It's, it's literally a set of marketing content, a set of content from the website, a set of content about the labs, a set of content about our retail relationships, you know, data, and it was a working tool that different people throughout the company would use if they needed to pull um, a piece of information to support a discussion. So if they wanted, for example, a picture of the system, if they were trying to describe the system, they would pull that slide from the deck to support discussion. So your testimony, as I understand it, is <coughs> you had this deck already in place and there was a discussion during the meeting with PFM in which you pulled out one slide, projected that, and then PFM from that point said, hey, can we get, later on said, can we get a copy of the deck that you used? Yes. Okay. Who pulled out that slide? I don't know. No, was it Mr. Balwani? I, again, I don't know. I, I know that I generally didn't bring computers to meetings, so probably, but I don't remember it specifically. If you go to page 733, there's a slide titled Clinical Data. 
and then a whole section full of slides behind it. Yes. And let's just take a look at a specific um, slide. So 754. Looks like there's a chart for ferritin. Do you see that? Yes. What is this chart uh, supposed to convey? Um, data that we thought was representative um, as to the performance of the, the chemistry um, that was designed to be able to handle small sample volumes. Okay, so so take me through what's being compared here. So um, is this a correlation graph? Uh, it's a method comparison graph. A method comparison graph. So what are you comparing here? You're comparing the Theranos assay to one by Alpco uh, uh, Diagnostics, I think is their name. And what are each of these assays being tested on? What, what device or platform are they being tested on? Um, I believe Ferritin was on the Theranos TSPU, and the Alpco is on a kit. Okay, and the kit, is that, what is that? Is that like a manual <coughs> kit? I, I think so, I don't know for sure. Okay, so you're comparing the performance of a Theranos assay on the TSPU versus um, a reference assay using some other platform. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And so is this trying to show that the Theranos method is quite close to the reference method? It's showing what the concordance is. At the time, we thought this was really good. Uh, today, we actually wouldn't accept this as being as good as we, we thought it was. <coughs> Why do you say that? Um, we, we used to believe that cutoffs like R squared and about this many samples were sufficient to show validation of a test, and we have much more comprehensive uh, mechanisms in place right now for the standards to which we're validating. So you understood in January 2014, though, that ferritin wasn't actually being tested on the TSPU in patient testing, though, correct? I don't know that I understood that in January 2014. Um, I, I knew there was a limited number of tests on the TSPU in the lab. Would it surprise you if you knew that ferritin was being tested <coughs> instead on a commercially available machine at that time? I don't think I would have known that, um, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was being tested on a commercial machine. Do you think that the fact that you're including these correlation graphs that compare the Theranos methods to reference methods and their Theranos methods being on the TSPU would uh, create the impression to people who are reviewing these slides that Theranos was using its TSPU for all of these tests no. at that time? Mm -hmm. Why? Um, because these data were intended to reflect the fact that we had worked on a large number of chemistries to um, handle small sample volumes and that we would work to bring those up in the lab over time. This was not intended to reflect the clinical lab. This, this is all under a section called clinical data? Yes. Is that right? I get Can you just differentiate in your mind the difference between clinical lab and clinical data? I believe clinical data is the term to reflect plots when you're using actual clinical samples for the plot, as opposed to some of the experiments that you were referencing earlier, which are not done on, on actual live samples. They're done on um, <coughs> contrived materials. Um, this part of the discussion um, was broadly about the, the assays that we were developing to the extent that we showed this data. So are you saying that patient samples were being used uh, in order to do this method comparison? Yes. So, so like leftover material from a, uh, from a test run on a, on a traditional machine could be used in, to, to test a fair assay, is that? So the, the last part of an assay sort of validation process, as I understand it, is the method comparison. And that's where you take an actual sample and compare two methods, the rest of the steps, like linearity or precision, are not done with actual patient samples. And that's why it says clinical data. This is the, that last step where you're actually doing the comparison with a clinical sample. 
Why don't we take a short break? Uh, we're off the record at 2.06 p.m. We're back on the record at 2.20 p.m. Ms. Holmes, did you have any substantive conversations with the SEC staff during the break? I did not. Did you ever send a subset of the internal slide deck, something similar to Exhibit 256, to... I don't know. Would it surprise you if you did? No. Why not? I mean, it was a, a tool that we used uh, in supporting discussions. Oh, but you'd earlier said that uh, you wouldn't provide the slides without some sort of explanation about those slides. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, what I was trying to say. Yeah, I don't think that's what she said. Go ahead and the yeah, I, what I was trying to say was that the, the slides were um, not created to be standalone material. Okay, so what were they created for? They were created to support discussions. Okay, I don't know how that's any different from what I just asked you. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe I misunderstood the question. I, I had understood you to say that the slide deck wasn't meant to be sent to other um, other people, such as potential investors, without an explanation for those slides. Isn't uh, that wasn't that your testimony? Um, maybe I didn't communicate clearly. I what I was attempting to communicate is that um, when those slides were created, they were not created to operate in a standalone way. Um, we would share them, um, and generally with people with whom we were in active discussion. Do you recall sending materials more generally, whether connected to Exhibit 256 or otherwise? Um, I, I recall that he was advising uh, me uh, and, and us in the early days of my relationship with him. He even acted as my counsel for a period of time. Um, so we, we shared a lot of information with him. Did you share any information with him in connection with uh, obtaining potential investments in Theranos? Um, we shared information with him in the context of the C2 round and the people who um, we were um, talking to. And I, I remember asking for his advice on you know, what information would make sense to, to share. The, uh, and, I, and I guess is it your testimony that you retained to, to provide you with legal advice on that issue? Um, I, I'm just trying to be careful about how. Yeah. He was his home's lawyer uh, for a significant amount of time on a number of issues, and we ended up talking about whether this goes into it or not. Let, let us have one, one second. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that was clearly attorney-client privilege. We're off the record at 2:23 p.m. Yeah. Just have a really quick conversation. We're on the record at 2.33 p.m. Ms. Holmes, did you have any substantive conversations with the SEC staff during the break? No. So just to follow up on a question, did you understand, did you have an understanding in 2014 that certain materials were provided in connection with this potential investment in Theranos? Yes or no? Uh, um, if you can answer it, yes or no. I, I understood that they were generally being provided for advice. Um, in connection with the C2 round that we were um, that we were working toward. What materials were those? I, I don't remember specifically. I know that he had <coughs> access to a number of documents that we sent documents to him. Uh, do you remember who at Theranos sent him those documents? I don't, um, but I, I, I would assume that I sent uh, some of them to him. Do you know if he passed those materials on to potential C2 investors? I don't know if he passed them on. I think he may have shown materials that he had to certain potential investors. Did, did you understand at the time that materials were being provided to him that he was intending to show those materials to potential investors? No, I think he did that later. Did, did they ever attend uh, meetings that you had with potential C2 investors at Theranos? Yes. Uh, would that include? Yes. Uh, would that include? Um, Just for clarity's sake, since there's a uh, sure Cox Investments. Yes. Um, who who else did he uh, attend along with? 
Um, he was at one of the meetings with, uh, um, it wasn't at Theranos, but it was um, about investing in Theranos. Um, and uh, he may have been at, at others as well. Uh, did he attend a meeting with um, representatives from the Niarcos Foundation? Yes. Uh, I guess in, in, in I, actually, I think so. He may have been on the phone. I'm not sure. Um, did, in, in any of those meetings, do you recall presenting a selection of the slides that we saw in Exhibit 256? I don't have memory of that, no. Earlier in your testimony, you testified that BDT Capital was hired as a financial advisor to Theranos. Do you remember that testimony? As, a, as an advisor initially, yes. Or that we engaged with them. I don't know that we hired them per se. Okay. And in late 2014, you understood that they were considering to invest in Theranos, that they were a potential investor as well, correct? I did. So I'm going to hand to you what's been marked as Theranos Exhibit 266. Exhibit 266 purports to be a December 6, uh, I'm sorry, December 19th, 2014 email from Elizabeth Holmes to Sunny Balwani. Subject line is forward project test company overview memo version 025.pdf with starting base number THPFM 0003891168 with an attachment with Bates number starting THPFM 0003891169. Have you seen Exhibit 266 before? I don't know. I, I don't remember it, but I don't have reason to doubt the email exchange. What is Exhibit 266? Um, it looks like an email exchange um, with an attachment from the Did you receive the email on December 18th, 2014 from on or about December 18th, 2014? Again, I don't remember it, but I assume I did. And you also received um, a following email around the same date from? It looks like I did, yes. Do you understand your addresses on these emails? Yes. So you'll see here uh, at the bottom of 1168 on Exhibit 266, there's an email from to you, and he says, Elizabeth, attached is the preliminary draft of our company overview that we would plan to send to the pre-approved co-investor targets. Do you see that? I do. Did you understand that information that they were including on this memo that he's attaching to this email was based on conversations that he had with you and Mr. Balwani? Uh, again, I, I don't remember uh, receiving this email and I, I don't know that I ever read the attachment. Had you had discussions with Capital prior to December 18, 2014? Yes. And in those discussions, had you described Theranos's <coughs> vision and its operations? Yes. Did you understand by the time of this email that Capital had prepared a memo in order to send out to potential co-investors? Uh, I, I don't know. My, my memory generally is that we were deciding whether or not to have invest and, and ultimately decided not to proceed. Did you have any discussions with Capital about them going out to find co-investors to invest together in Theranos? With um, my memory is that they already had entities that were interested in investing, um, but I don't remember specific conversations about that. Okay, so in Todd's email at the bottom, he says, feel free to make any changes, edits. Do you see that? Yes. Did you end up making any changes to the memorandum that he attached? And, sending, and did you ever send that back to the capital? 
again, I don't recognize the document, so I don't know that we ever went through it. I think we ended up deciding not to proceed with the financial investment from. Okay, and after Ms. Sims's email, then he sends another email, and she attaches instead of the PDV, uh, PDF version of the memorandum, she sends a Word version of the document. Do you see that? I do. So she was intending to make it easier for you and Mr. Balwani, or at least for you to make changes to the document, correct? Yes. Okay, and then you send it, you forward the email to Mr. Balwani. Do you see that at the top? Yes. What was your purpose in sending it to Mr. Balwani? I don't know. I can't remember receiving this email. You can keep that in front of you. I'm going to hand to you what's been marked there in Exhibit 267. Exhibit 267 reports to be a December 23, 2014 email from to Elizabeth Holmes with a copy of the subject line is re follow up to our call with starting base number BDT SEC underscore PST. 00050074. Have you seen Exhibit 267 before? Um, I don't recognize it, but I don't have reason to doubt the document. And was he also a member of the BDT team? I think so. So if you look um, on the bottom of Exhibit 267-5074, there is an email from you on December 23rd, 2014. Uh, did you send that email on or about December 23rd, 2014? Again, I don't remember it, but I don't have reason to doubt the document. Okay, and so you're sending an email to, um, uh, it looks like, and here you, s you note in your email, let's see, one, two, three, the fourth paragraph down, you say, with respect to the investment memo, our team had a mini heart attack seeing our complete strategy future plans, unannounced deals, and profit margins delineated in a single document like that, especially without any encryption of the document. Do you see that? Yes. Does this refresh your recollection that you reviewed the memo at the no. time? No. How would you know that the memo included all of these things, like Theranos' complete strategy, future plans, unannounced deals, and profit mar uh, margins, unless you reviewed it? Looks like our team reviewed it. I don't know who. Who on your team would have reviewed the memo? I don't know. Who else received the memo besides you and Mr. Balwani? I don't know. If you look a little further down in the, the, that same paragraph, it, the, it says, let me know if the, if the intent is for this to go only to persons who have committed to participate <coughs> through co-investment to a broader group. Semicolon, I'd like to get a sense of what the purpose of the document is at the stage, and we can then send back our thoughts and edits based on what we are trying to do uh, with it at this point. Do you see that? Yes. What, what were you asking him there? Sitting here reading it now, I assume I'm saying what, what is the purpose of the document, and then we'll edit it based on the intended audience. Did you, did you not understand the purpose of the document b before asking him? I, I mean, I'm assuming not, given that I'm asking here. So going back to Exhibit 266, you want to turn to the attachment to the email. Yes. And look at the page number ending, the dates number ending 1172. Oh, actually, first, could you um, actually start on 1169? You'll see this is the cover page of the memorandum. And it's titled Project Test. Do you see that? Yes. Did you understand in your discussions with BDT Capital that they were using TEST uh, as a code name for Theranos? I don't remember that, um, but it looks like they were. OK. Why don't you turn to 1172? So I want to focus on uh, the portion of this page under compelling strategic plan. You'll see on the third paragraph down it says, 
In conjunction with its execution of its seven-pronged strategic plan, the company is currently negotiating the terms of a contract with the U.S. government to provide testing services for Ebola within U.S. airports and alongside the U.S. military and aid agencies in West Africa. Did you tell Edis? I don't remember a specific um, conversation to that effect. Do you remember a general conversation to that effect? I don't remember general conversations to that effect. I know at the time we were devoting a lot of resources to the submission of an emergency use authorization for Ebola and were hopeful that we would be able to engage in contracting opportunities. So you remember that you were in, you were hopeful about engaging in contract opportunities? W were you were you negotiating the terms of a contract with the U.S. government at that time with respect to Ebola? Not that I can recall. So would this statement be true as of late 2014? I, I don't think so, but I, I can't remember exactly who we were engaging with on Ebola contracting. Did who would know the answer to that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. We, we need to look back at um, how we were doing this at that time. I, I haven't thought about it for a long time. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make a statement to this effect, that the, the company is currently negotiating the terms of a contract <coughs> with the U.S. government with respect to Ebola? I, I can't remember any discussions to that effect. <coughs> if you turn to the next page, which is 1173. Under technology and hardware, the second paragraph down, the memorandum says, samples for all tests are run on one proprietary diagnostic machine and unprecedented capability in testing and a significant technological competitive advantage versus peers. Did you tell me that? Uh, to the extent we were discussing the mini lab, um, yes. That's what the mini lab is architected to do. It says all tests are run on one. Is, is this an aspirational statement then in your mind, or? Um, yes, it's a description of the design of the mini lab. We, yes. Did you tell the capital that Theranos was not actually using its proprietary diagnostic machine to perform patient tests, or all patient tests rather? That it was only perform that it was it was only being used to perform a small subset of the tests. I, I don't think we had discussions about what it was being used to do in the in the clinical lab. Why not? Because the bulk of our focus was on phase two of our model and getting the machine out and distributed. The capital wasn't interested in what Theranos was doing at the time. I, I don't know what they were interested in. Did they ever ask you questions about what Theranos was doing at the time? Again, I can't remember the specifics of the conversations with them. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make a statement like this to be that samples of all tests are run on one proprietary diagnostic machine? Again, I can't remember the specifics of conversations with You turn to 1174. <coughs> Under test accuracy, second paragraph down, it says, a validation study published by Johns Hopkins in 2010 concluded that the technology is novel and sound, it can accurately run a wide range of routine and special assays, and that no major weaknesses were identified. Did you tell me that there was a validation study that was published by Johns Hopkins in 2010 that concluded that? I don't think we told them. My memory is they actually got access to the, the Johns Hopkins document in and of itself. Your memory is that they got access to the Johns Hopkins document? Are you talking yes. about the April 2010 document? document? I, I, I think so, yeah. How did they gain access to that document? I'm not sure if we gave it to them or somebody else gave it to them. I'm not sure. Did you ever describe the Dot the April 2010 document from Johns Hopkins as a validation study? I, I don't remember specific conversations to that effect. Uh, other than the Johns Hopkins report, do you, do you remember anything else that was provided? I, 
I don't. I, I know we were actively engaged with them over a period of months on a lot of different aspects of our business, so I'm sure they had access to a lot of content. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make the statement to you that there was a validation study that was published by Johns Hopkins in 2010? Not that I can remember. On that same page, under select clinical correlations, the memorandum states, the company has validated all of its tests versus traditional laboratory and reference methods to dis demonstrate their accuracy. Did you tell this? I don't know. Was this true in December 2014? Um, I, I, again, I haven't read the document, so I'm not sure specifically whether this is referring to product development or the clinical lab. Um, we, we thought we had done this, um, both in tests we developed on the product development side as well as tests we had validated as LDTs in the clinical lab. Did you make clear to me at this time in December or late 2014 that the, clinic, the clinical data that you were showing them pertained to uh, data that was uh, generated in the R&D lab and not in the, the clinical lab that was performing patient testing? I don't know if we showed them data from the lab, the LDTs or R&D data, certainly to the extent that we showed R&D data, my memory is we generally would describe it as product development data on all the tests we created. Turning to page 1175, under manufacturing, the memorandum states, test currently manufactures 100% of its diagnostic machines and associated consumables in a single plant in Newark, California. Did you, did you tell the capital that Theranos currently manufactured 100% of its diagnostic machines in Newark, California, as of December 2014? Uh, to the extent it's referring to um, the mini lab and all of the components in the mini lab. Um, what? You, you did. You did tell Capital that. I, I don't know that I personally said that, but that was something that Theranos was very proud of. That every component of Mini Lab was manufactured in this Newark facility. The Mini Lab wasn't 100% of Theranos's diagnostic machines at the time, was it? No. Um, just 100% of the Mini Lab was manufactured in the Newark facility. So was the statement true as of? December 2014? Um, only with respect to the mini lab. Th this statement isn't qualified with respect to the mini lab, is it? No, again, I, I, I don't think I've ever read this whole document, so I'm not sure if this is talking about the clinical lab or the technology we were working to develop. No. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make this statement to Capital? Not that I can remember. Uh, the third paragraph down, it says, unlike other sector participants, TEST operates a vertically integrated manufacturing model. The company receives raw materials, e.g. plastic, aluminum, etc., and constructs each and every component of the finished products, diagnostic machines, and associated consumables. Did you tell B this? Again, I, I don't remember specific conversations with Did you hear Mr. Balwani make this statement? To be Not that I can remember. Was the statement true as of December 2014? With respect to our mini lab. Is the statement in any way qualified with respect to the mini lab? Again, I, I haven't read this document, so I don't know what the pretext to this is. Uh, this section um, just talks about uh, diagnostic machines. And Theranos was using other diagnostic machines besides the mini lab in December 2014, correct? In its clinical lab, yes. If you turn to 1178 and 1179, starting on page 1178, there's a section called Walgreens. Do you see that halfway down the page? Yes. Okay, if you flip over to 1179 at the very top. The very top of the page, there's a sentence that starts, the contract does not limit. 
So the memo is talking about Walgreens, and it says that the contract does not limit or restrict tests from opening additional locations if the company chooses to do so. Did you tell Capital that in December, uh, around December 2014? I, I don't think so. My memory is we gave them access to the Walgreens agreement, and they reviewed it directly. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make this statement to Capital? No, again, I, I don't remember any specifics of the conversations. Maybe. Was the statement true as of December 2014? Do you mind if I read the paragraph? Was it true that the contract, the Walgreens contract, didn't doesn't uh, restrict Theranos from opening additional locations if Theranos chose to do so? I don't know. Wasn't it true that Walgreens and Theranos had to work together to plan out additional locations to open it? I, I, I yes, I remember that in certain versions of the contract. I'm not. I'm not sure what this is referring to. So if you look down another two paragraphs from there, the memorandum states, as part of the agreement, and this is talking about the Walgreens agreement again, the two companies will partner together to make TEST the largest clinical laboratory in the U.S. This development is on target, and the two companies anticipate achieving this milestone by the end of 2016. Did you tell Capital that in late 2014? Um, I don't think so. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make the statement, Capital? I, I can't remember the specifics of conversations. Was the statement true as of December 2014? I don't know. Do you ever recall a time in which uh, Walgreens stated it was going to make Theranos the largest clinical laboratory in the U.S.? Um, certainly, the the prior um, Walgreens management team had that vision. I don't remember specific conversations uh, to that effect. So, so the vision would be the sort of the pre boots leadership. Yes. So if you look down another paragraph under that, uh, in the middle of the next paragraph, it says. In 2015, the company plans to dramatically expand its wellness center penetration to several hundred stores across multiple states. Did you call Capital? That's... No, I don't think so. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to Capital? Um, I, I can't remember any of the specifics of the conversations. Was that statement true as of December 2014? Um, I, again, my read on this, sitting here now, is that this was the conclusions they drew from reading the contract themselves. But you don't have any recollection that that's the basis for the statement here? I, I don't. I just remember giving them access to the agreement. Okay, so we now we talked about the, the agreement and then the Johns Hopkins report. Do you remember giving them access to any other information? Um, I'm just thinking. Um, I don't know specifically. I, I generally remember that because we had met them in the context of wanting them to advise us, that we gave them broad access to a lot of content internally. I, I don't. I can't sit here and remember another specific document. So if you turn the page to one one eight zero, about a third down the page, there's a section on Safeway. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. The second paragraph starts, the company projects to launch wellness centers within Safeway stores in 2015 beginning in California. Did you tell the capital that? I don't think so. Did Mr. Balwani tell the capital that? I don't know. Was that statement true as of December 2014? I don't know. 
going on to page with Bade sending 1183. You can see there is a table here in the middle of the page that's titled Company Projections. Do you see that? Yes. And this shows that Theranos is earning uh, $8 million from physicians' offices and uh, $43 million from hospital courier services in the fourth quarter of 2014. Do you see that? I do. Did you provide these projections to be? No. Did Mr. Balwani provide these projections to you? I don't know. Were these projections reasonable in December 2014 that Theranos was set to make $8 million in revenue from physicians' offices and $43 million from hospitals uh, through couriering uh, samples? I don't think so. Why not? I, I don't think we um, deployed the retail locations to do this in uh, 2014. <coughs> Did Theranos end up earning any revenues from these two sectors in fourth quarter of 2014? I don't know. You'll also see that on the same page, on the company projections page, in that same table we were looking at under pharmaceutical services, there's a projection of $8 million for pharmaceutical services in uh, fourth quarter of 2014 for a total of $40 million projected revenues in uh, 2014 for the year. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Did you tell Capital that Theranos was on the road to achieving $40 million uh, in revenues from ph pharmaceutical services? I don't think so. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to uh, again, I, I can't remember any of the specifics of the conversations with you. So, if you look at those two numbers, it would appear that Theranos would have generated about $32 million in revenues from pharmaceutical services for the rest of the year, uh, first quarter to third quarter of 2014. Do you see that? I do. Had Theranos um, generated $32 million from pharmaceutical services? in first quarter to third quarter 2014? I don't think so. So if you look on the bottom of the page, under retail pharmacies, the memorandum states, Walgreens locations, TESS currently has 41 wellness centers in Walgreens stores, 40 in Arizona, one in Palo Alto, California, and plans to open wellness centers in 900 total Walgreens pharmacies by year end 2015. Did you tell Capital this? I don't think so. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make this statement to Capital? Again, I can't remember any of the specifics of the conversations. With was this a true statement that Theranos was planning to open wellness centers in 900 total Walgreens pharmacies by year end 2015? I don't know. You turn the page to 1184 under physicians offices. Second bullet point down, it says locations. The company is currently in 101 physician offices and plans to be in approximately 700 offices by year end 2015. Did you tell Capital this? No. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make this statement to Capital? I don't think so. Was the statement true as of December 2014? I don't know. I think if, if we were doing physician pickup, it may have been reflective of that. I don't know when we were doing that. Was Theranos currently, at that time in December 2014, in 101 physicians' offices? I don't know. Was it ever? We were picking up samples from physician offices. I don't know how many physician offices we were picking up from. If you uh, turn to the next page, 1185, under pharmaceutical services. The first bullet point says cartridges. Test currently runs 3,000 samples per month, 100 per day. Given current contracts, it expects this number to increase to 5,000 in the second half of 2015. Did you tell Capital 
that Theranos was currently running 3,000 samples per, per month uh, under pharmaceutical services contracts? No. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make this statement to Capital? Not that I can remember. Was the statement true as of December 2015? I'm sorry. So. Was, this, was this accurate in December 2014? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. Did you ever tell the capital that given current contracts and pharmaceutical services that Theranos expected the number of samples run each month to increase to 5,000 in the second half of 2015? I don't think so. Did you ever hear uh, Mr. Balwani make that statement to the capital? Not that I can remember. Was the statement true as of December 2014? I don't know. You mentioned earlier that there were others on your team who might have reviewed the, the memorandum and told you that it included complete uh, notes about Theranos' complete strategy, future plans, and announced deals and profit margins. Do you remember that testimony? I just that I was inferring that from the email you showed me. So you don't know whether somebody might have told you that? Uh, again, I don't remember sending this email. I'm just looking at the language in it now. and. The fact that I said our team as opposed to I uh, likely means that. Did anyone raise any issues with respect to the accuracy of the statements made in this memorandum to you from your team? I, I honestly don't know that we read the memoranda in detail. I mean, it looks like some people looked at it, but I don't remember ever reading it. It, we, we spoke before about you having a lot of access to information at Theranos, right? Yep. And uh, at this time, they were they'd been working with the company for some time. Is that fair? Yes. Um, a few you, months. You, in, in that, in those few months, you met with several times. Is that fair? Yes. And with his associates several times. I think so. Yes. And it was your understanding that Mr. Balwani did the same. Yes. Uh, does it concern you at all that this is the impression they formed on the company? given the level of interaction they had by December 2014. I, I'm a little bit confused by it. I'm, I'm not quite sure where it's coming from or if it was just intended to be a sales piece that we were to edit. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure. Certainly, I, I don't think we conveyed some of the things that were in it. <coughs> Did it concern you that they were intending to send that memorandum to co-investors, even though it included some inaccurate statements? Again, I don't know that I read it at the time. Uh, we certainly would have wanted to make sure it was accurate if it were going to have gone out. Why didn't you review it and, and make changes and edits to it, considering that they asked you to do that? I think at this time we were um, beginning to think that we were not going to be doing a deal with so we weren't paying a lot of attention to it. Did you tell me at that time that you weren't going to be doing a deal with them? I, I think a couple weeks later or a week or so later. Mm. You, you continued to meet with in a late December 2014 time period, right? I think so, yes. Did I ask you again for your feedback on this document? I don't know. Uh, did anyone from? I don't know. Did you ever tell PFM in early 2014 that Theranos had 300 machines that were running in Theranos' labs? Uh, not that I can remember. Did you hear Sonny Balwani make the statement to PFM? Not that I can remember. Did you ever tell PFM in early 2014 that Theranos had the capability to manufacture 200 mini labs? Not that I can remember. Did you hear Sunny Balwani make this statement to PFM? Again, I can't remember specifics of the conversation with PFM. Was that statement true as of January 2014? I don't know. Did you ever tell PFM that Theranos had a roadmap to 1,300 assays? I don't know. Did you hear Sunny Balwani make that statement to PFM? Not that I can remember. 
would this statement have been true as of January 2014? In a product development sense, yes. Did you ever tell PFM in January 2014 that Theranos had developed almost all of the 1,300 assays and had launched some of the 1,300 assays? I don't remember specific discussions to that effect. Did you hear Mr. Balwani ever make that statement to PFM? Not that I can remember. Was that statement true as of January 2014? It's actually a compound, compound statement. There's multiple, quote, multiple statements in there. Sure, we can go through them one by one. Sure. So, did you ever tell PFM that Theranos developed 1,300 assays? No. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to PFM? Not that I can remember. Was that statement true as of January 2014? No. <coughs> did you ever tell PFM that Theranos can put uh, The Drone Partners was a C2 investor, correct? Yes. And, George, and uh, Greg Penner was the member of the Walton family that was considering an investment in Theranos on behalf of the Madrone Partners? I think Greg and Rob both, yes. Greg and Rob both. Yeah. You were in discussions with both uh, Mr. Penner and Mr. Walton uh, in the fall of 2014 to invest in Theranos? Yes. Did you ever tell Mr. Penner that Theranos could execute just with the cash that it had at the time and the cash flow that it had achieved through its contracts? In the fall of 2014? Yes. Um, I don't know. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? I don't know. Would that have been true in uh, late 2014? Um, I don't know. Did you ever tell B Capital in September of 2014 that Theranos' goal was to be in 800 stores by the end of 2015? I don't know. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? N not that I can remember. Did you ever tell Capital that Theranos' machines cost thirty-five to $40,000 versus a million dollars for Theranos' competitors? Not that I can remember. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to the Capitol? I don't know. Was that statement true, that Theranos' machines cost thirty-five dollars to $40,000? Uh, that's, that's in the range of the what the cost of goods of the mini lab likely was at that time. So yeah. that, sorry. What do you mean by cost of goods? Um, the, the cost to make a, a mini lab. Uh, just the components for the labor and I believe all of the above, the fully loaded cost of goods. Did you ever tell Capital that all of Theranos' devices work on one box, um, which is a significant advantage versus Theranos' competitors? I'm not sure I understand the question. All of the devices? Maybe it's all of their tests. Did you ever tell Capital that all of your tests work on one box, which is different from your competitors? I don't remember saying that, but that's what the mini lab is designed to do. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to Capital? I don't know. Did you ever tell Capital that Theranos solves a fundamental problem for the military because Theranos can run tests quickly on one portable machine where no one else can? I don't know if we said that. Did, Mr. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? I don't know. Did you ever tell Capital that all of Theranos' tests can be run on one machine with one disposable cartridge? I, again, I, I don't remember the specifics of conversations, but that's what Minilab is designed to do. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? I don't know. So of course that wouldn't have applied to the test that Theranos was conducting in patient testing, correct? 
me to that question again. Sorry. What do you mean? So it's not true that all of all of Theranos' tests were being performed on the mini lab, correct? Correct. That a majority of the tests were actually performed on commercially available machines, correct? Yeah, absolutely. What is Fremont Group? It's a fund that manages mostly the Bechtel family money. Uh, were you in discussions in late 2014 uh, about a possible investment in Theranos from F Fremont Group? Yes. Who were your discussions with? Um, primarily. Was there anyone else who was involved in those discussions? Um, there was, um, and I, I don't remember the names of the principals. Was one of them? I think so. Sorry. Okay. Another? I don't know. Did you give Fremont Group a copy of Theranos' financial model, which showed projections? I, I did not. I, I don't know if Theranos <coughs> did. I did not. I don't know if anyone else at Theranos did. Did Sunny Balwani provide financial projections to Fremont Group? I don't know. Did you tell Fremont Group in late 2014 that the financial numbers the Theranos' financial numbers were based on no new contracts? Uh, I don't think, no. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make this statement to Fremont Group in late 2014? Not that I can remember. Was this statement true as of late 2014? I don't know. Did you tell anyone from the Fremont Group that Theranos' assay run test time was always less than one hour? I don't know. Would that, do you recall Mr. Balwani saying that to anyone from the Fremont Group? Not that I can recall. Would, would that have been a true statement in uh, October of 2014? Um, to the extent we were talking about the design of the mini lab, but not just in our clinical lab. Did you tell Fremont Group? <coughs> again. Did you tell Fremont Group in late 2014 that devices now cost? $40,000 fully loaded? Not that I can remember. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to Fremont Group? I don't know. Was that statement true in late 2014? I don't know. Did you tell Fremont Group in late 2014 that Theranos had put its TSPU on a medevac helicopter? No. Why do you say no? Because I know I've never said that. You've never said that, okay. Um, did you hear Sunny Balwani make this statement to Fremont Group? No. Would this statement have been true in late 2014? No. Did you tell Capital in October 2014 that Theranos had an auditor and that its financial statements were audited as well? Um, I, I don't know. I, I know we were discussing a new audit with him. What do you recall about your conversations regarding the new audit? Um, that we were discussing with them engaging with KPMG to get an audit done. Oh, in, in what context? Were they surprised that Theranos wasn't getting an audit, audits done? No, I believe we were talking about getting audits done on a go-forward basis. Mm -hmm. Do they ever request to see audited financials, historical financials? I, I don't know. They might have. I can't remember. Did you ever tell Capital that KPMG was Theranos' current auditor in late 2014? I don't know. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to Capital? Uh, just so I understand the question, what do you mean by current auditor? That KPMG had been hired by Theranos to act as its auditor as of late 2014. Um, we may have discussed it in terms of past years, but I know we discussed it that we didn't have uh, in certain years audited. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to Capital that KPMG was Theranos' current auditor 
as of late 2014. I'm not quite sure what current auditor means, but no, I don't remember the specifics of conversations. Did Theranos have an auditor as of late 2014? Not for calendar year 2014, no. Did you ever tell We were engaged with KPMG at that time about auditing uh, recent years. Did you ever tell We're engaging with them. So, I'm sorry. No, I apologize. But, uh, does that cover it? Yes. <laughs> no, no, I, Sorry. I, I, no, I, uh, I was trying to be complete. No, I appreciate it. The, uh, did you ever tell any prospective investors that they couldn't see Theranos' audited financials because they revealed commercially sensitive information about the company? Not that I can remember. I, I believe that was a discussion about how we would share go-forward uh, financials, but not historical ones. Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, we were very focused in getting audits, had we proceeded with getting audits done at that time, uh, about the disclosure of those materials once they were complete uh, with respect to how they handled footnotes on the Walgreens and Safeway contracts specifically. So you were anticipating sharing audited financials with shareholders on a go-forward basis? I, I'm not sure exactly. I don't remember the discussions very specifically, but I, I know that was an area of focus uh, when we were talking about starting to get audited financials done at that time. Did the board ever encourage you to get completed audited financials? Not that I can remember. Did you tell the board that Theranos had not completed it <coughs> annual audits in some time? Yes. Did you ever tell uh, potential investors that Theranos couldn't share audited financials with them because it wasn't sharing audited financials with other investors? Uh, we generally disclosed that we didn't have audited financials, is my memory. Uh, I, I, again, if there's a specific conversation, I could try to speak to it more specifically. Who do you recall having a conversation with about the fact that Theranos had no audited financials? I don't recall a specific conversation. I just know we were very open about it. Did you ever tell Capital in late 2014 that there were no proximity? Uh, sorry, let me start over again. Did you ever tell Capital in late 2014 that there were no proximity limitations in the Walgreens contract, just time exclusivity? I, I don't know what that means. Did you ever tell Capital that? Um, that uh, there were no geographic limitations to the rollout of Theranos services at Walgreens locations in late 2014? I'm sorry, just so I can answer the question, what is a geographic limitation? That there was no, that the company, that the two companies had not discussed any limitations as to the rollout of Theranos services in the Walgreens stores in 2015. Sorry, uh, Jessica, I still I don't understand what you're asking. Okay, let me start over again. Yeah. Did you ever tell Capital that there were no geographical limitations to where Theranos could roll out its services in Walgreens stores? So, just making sure I'm answering the question you're asking, the question is that we could roll out anywhere in the country? Yes. Um, I, I don't remember specifically saying that. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani making that statement to Capital? Not that I can remember. Was that true as of late 2014? Was what true? That statement. Can, can you say it one more time? Because none of us, we were all having a hard time, so I want to make sure she knows what you're asking. What statement? That there were no geographic limitations to the rollout of Theranos services in Walgreens stores. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to Capital? Not that I can recall. Was that a true statement as of 2014? I, I don't really understand it, um, but uh, I mean, again, I know I'm at access to the Walgreens agreement. And it was true that Theranos had to work with Walgreens in order to decide which additional stores to roll out Theranos services in, correct? I mean, as, as we've discussed today, that relationship evolved so much that I don't know what the state of it was in December 14 from memory. It's true that Theranos couldn't unilaterally decide to roll out in any number of Walgreens stores without Walgreens consent, correct? Of course, they had to work with us on it. Okay. And you, guys, you understood that in December 2014, is that correct? 
Yes, I mean, it's their stores. They would have to be compliant with us showing up in them. Did you ever tell Capital in late 2014 that you were fairly confident on hitting the 2014 financial projections? I don't think so. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? Not that I can remember. Did you ever tell Capital in late 2014 that with respect to 2015 projections, you believe that there could be a plus or minus 30% variance due largely to risk of execution? I don't think so. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? Not that I can remember. RDB Corporation of the DeVos family, correct? Yes. Who were your contacts at RDB Corporation? At, at what time? Uh, around the time that they were considering to invest in fairness. Um, I believe. Was the, <coughs> did you understand that they were part of this team? I don't know if I knew that at that time. I met, I think, later. And Theranos was having discussions with RDV Corporation in uh, late 2014 about possibly investing in Theranos, correct? Yes. Did you tell RDV Corporation in late 2014 that instead of vials of blood, one for every test needed, that Theranos require, requires only a pinprick and a drop of blood to perform hundreds of tests? Uh, I don't know. Was that statement true as of late 2014? Could you perform hundreds of tests on one pin, pin prick of blood? We had developed hundreds of tests to run on a pin prick of blood at that time, it, from a product development standpoint. So earlier we had talked about how it was 70 tests on one pin prick of blood. So now you're saying that a hundreds of tests could be performed on one finger prick uh, sample of blood? Jesse, you just mischaracterized it. One, you, you mischaracterized the earlier testimony right now and what she just said in response to your question. There are two different questions. I mean, I, Elizabeth can answer, but I, I think you, you should ask the question rather than suggest that she's saying one thing now versus one thing earlier. Well, can you square those two? That was what I understood that you said, so can you square those two? W which one is accurate? So what you're assuming that only one can be, that's not Okay, true. so if both of them are accurate, how are they both accurate? Yeah, I believe earlier today we were talking about how, <coughs> from a product development standpoint, the, <coughs> the novel chemistries that we developed could work with a, as low as a microliter or less of blood. Uh, and, and therefore, if you, you could run 70 of them, for example, from a single sample, additionally, by this time, fall of 14, Theranos had created, developed, and had development in what we thought were validation reports for hundreds of chemistries that we had actually made the reagents for, made the chemistry for, shown that the chemistry worked on small sample volumes um, from a product development standpoint. So, so what your testimony is, is that the, the, if there's a reference to hundreds off of a, off of a drop of blood, it's not hundreds of tests with the same drop of blood, but one drop for each of those hundred tests or, or something so like that. That was my understanding of the statement that you just um, made. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make the statement that Theranos requires only a pinprick and a drop of blood to perform hundreds of tests? I, I don't know. Did you tell RDV Corporation in late 2014 that Theranos's revenue for 2015 is projected to be $990 million? I don't think so. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? Not that I can remember. Did you ever tell RDV Corporation that Theranos would open or, or was on the path to opening 900 Walgreens Theranos centers by 2015? I don't think so. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? 
Not that I can remember. Did you ever tell RDV Corporation that Theranos has no debt and has no plans to take on any debt financing? I don't think so. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? Not that I can remember. Was that statement true as of late 2014? I think so. Did you consider uh, the Walgreens convertible note and the Safeway convertible note as debt? I, I don't know. What did you consider that as, if not debt? I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Was there interest that Theranos was paying on that loan, those two loans? At that time, I, I don't know if we were thinking that that loan was going to convert into equity. I'm not sure how we were thinking about it. So it's been a little over an hour. We take a break. Or you, you know, I'm still in the middle of this document, so I only have a few more questions, and then we can take a break. How for you. far from the end, totally right. I have three more questions. N not from no, no, totally from the no, end. No, no, oh, from well, for, the, for the day. Why don't we day. talk about that at the break? And I think there's just a couple more questions on this kind of theme, okay. and then we can. Did you ever tell RDV Corporation in late 2014 that cash you would raise from them would be used to redeem earlier investors with shorter term investment horizons? Could you read that again? Did you ever tell Capital that... Sorry, RDV? I'm sorry. Did you ever tell RDV Corporation in late 2014 that cash you were going to raise from them and other investors would be used to redeem earlier investors with shorter term investment horizons? I don't know if I said that, but that was definitely one of the strategies for raising money from long-term family sort of controlled companies and investment entities. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? I don't know. Did Theranos ever redeem earlier investors with C2 proceeds? Not in the way we had wanted to, which was sort of to buy out uh, certain entities that we had learned did not have sort of a long-term interest in holding the shares. And we, we did a little bit of exercising the right of first refusal to make sure that shares didn't end up in secondary markets. So I guess why, why didn't Theranos uh, sort of pursue that uh, shareholder <coughs> consolidation strategy more aggressively? Because shortly after we closed this round, we started dealing with the Wall Street Journal. And then very shortly after that, we're in sort of crisis mode trying to deal with the issues with the journal and then regulators. It was just general timing. Yes, yeah. we, we didn't get the chance to execute on the plan we had. Did you tell RDV Corporation in late 2014 that Theranos uses its own analyzer equipment? I, I don't know if I did. I'm, I'm not sure. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? Uh, again, I can't remember the specifics of these conversations. I don't, I don't know. Did you ever tell RDV Corporation in late 2014 that the Theranos analyzer is a small fraction of the size of the current lab? I can't remember the specifics of the conversation, but uh, that's reflective of Minilab. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to, I'm um, sorry, to RDV Corporation? I, I don't know. Okay. okay, we can take a break. We are off the record at 3.34 p.m. <coughs>